So in this video, I want to talk about the conversation of grooming. It is a topic that I knew would be brought up with Freya as a character, and of course there will be no spoilers in this video, so do not stress, spoiler free, but I will be potentially talking about some stuff inside story volumes that are not in the anime, and will never be in the anime, but they are stuff that are like side story stuff, so just be warned there. One of the conversations that I knew was going to be brought up, and has been brought up, is that Freya is grooming Belle, and acting as if she is the only one that is doing it, and I kind of... Yeah, I agree. Freya is grooming Belle in what she's trying to do, how she's trying to warp his perception, change how he sees the world, and trying to insert certain memories of a life that never existed, and trying to erase other memories, and trying to, again, mold him into that person that she wants, which really goes against why she's in love with him. And that in itself is desperation. That is why I see her as being misunderstood, because she is really a broken character. She is lonely. She is desperate. She desires so badly to find true love in itself, and she can't. She really cannot find true love, not in a proper sense, because of the fact that who she is, because of her powers, because of her sort of passive aura that's about her. And so she has just become broken in itself and making very bad, poor decisions and contradicting herself. Like, she wants Belle to love him or love her so badly that she is forcing him to become a person that is not him. So in itself, she's basically changing the person that she's really in love with. So it, it goes against her own sort of reasoning. It's just what happens when someone is truly gone a point of no return. But I would like to push back on the idea of grooming. Like I'm not denying Freya is doing that. But I'd like to bring up another point that people will ignore is that the gods and the goddesses themselves are grooming their own children. All of them in some degree. They're molding them into what they want. They're playing like they're, they're playing with little toys, putting them in the dungeon, leveling them up, doing certain crafts. And the one person that is the biggest culprit of being a groomer is Hermes. Hermes is the worst culprit, in my opinion, because he has tried over and over and over and over again to force Belle to be a hero in a very specific way, to the point where he is willing to sacrifice other people's lives, or the, the Xenos, to get his overall objective as far as forcing Belle to be the hero that he desires. He is one of the worst in it. He goes completely against Belle's wishes, which, yeah, Freya does the same, but Hermes also does it. And I don't think it's fair to bring up grooming when it comes to just her, when people ignore the other gods and goddesses that do exactly the same. Even the bad, like the bad gods and goddesses that have all these humans going out there doing some terrible things. They themselves are molding them into these corrupt individuals, influencing them. They don't have to directly be like, go do this, but they love to influence and that's the word, yeah, grooming. Send them out there. Give suggestive ideas. Persuade them into certain ways. And that's the thing that I actually find most interesting about the gods and the goddesses as they've come down to the lower planes and they're influencing the lower planes into being almost like they're toys. It's like playing the sims for them. They're just influencing. At times they can rebel and do their own thing and get upset and do, you know, but they like to just nudge them in a certain direction. And I think all the gods and goddesses in some degree do this. Some not that much, and some much more. It's a very large scale, and I think people like Hermes are definitely on the higher end of the scale. Now, of course, some people are going to be like, well, what about Hestia? I do think Hestia does try to influence his bell behavior, but nowhere near to that degree. She is far more innocent in itself, but she definitely is not guilt or innocent of influencing or trying to influence Belle's behavior in a certain degree. And that's the thing about us as individuals. We all do this to some degree. We try to influence other people. It's how the world works. You know, you might see your friend doing something and you're like, okay, that's a bad decision. And you try to approach them and you try to reason with them. You're like, you know, maybe this would be a bad idea. People will then argue, well, that's grooming. See, that's the funny part about the word, is that it's very easy to be very specific, but it's also very easy to use it in a broad term. And I know some people can say, oh, well, you're using it too broadly, but mm, this is kind of how the word works. And especially when it's been used in other animes and light novels in a much more broader sense, 
I like to bring it up in this sense because the gods and the goddesses are definitely not innocent of this behavior. Now, again, I'm not saying it's all bad because, yeah, it's one of those situations where, like, Hestia would be like, hey, Belle, you know, maybe you shouldn't go down that low in the bottom floors of the dungeon. Maybe take it a little bit slow, Turbo. And that in itself, she's trying to influence him, trying to make sure that he stays safe by influencing his behavior in a certain way. Some could argue that's grooming. I think it's a more positive side of that because, hey, don't let Bell go too crazy. He can sometimes be a little bit tunnel visioned in trying to chase those overall objectives. She has her heart in the right place. But then when you look at someone like Hermes and Freya, yeah, not so much. Freya definitely going to extremes and Hermes going to extremes as well. Not so much throwing Bell's life in danger, but willing to throw other people's lives in danger to pursue that goal of making him into the hero that he so desires. Which is why it's so satisfying when Bell rebels against that and becomes the hero that he wants to be. Doesn't matter if others see it as a contradiction, he will do and defy what others want because he wants to do what he feels is right in himself. If it means he's gonna save the monsters themselves because one day the monsters and the humans will work together to overcome a greater evil or whatnot, that's what Bell will do. He will do what he believes is right and not be influenced by those around him. And that's why I love Bell as a character from that side of things is because a lot of these gods and goddesses are trying to influence their children into behaving and doing certain things. And there are many definitely out there that are trying to influence Bell. But Bell is rebelling. He is the rebellion. He just, he will not do what they want. And that's what I find so satisfying is that he always defies the odds when it really counts. Not everything always goes his way. But there are moments where he truly defies the odds in itself. And that's what makes it so satisfying. There are definitely moments where you're kind of, eh, you know, you question it. But th these moments is what I love about Belle in itself. He can be wishy-washy when it comes to the ladies. But when it comes to being a hero, that's when he puts his foot down and says, No, I'm going to do it my way. And I'm not going to let anyone anyone dictate how I'm going to be as a hero and that's why I find it so funny because Hermes is a very manipulative individual a very cunning individual and a very smart one but sometimes can be a little bit stupid everyone has their moments and that's why I find Hermes is a really cool character because it fits exactly sort of the backstory of how our mythology works because yeah it is exactly to how he works. And I look forward to seeing how he goes going forward. And if certain other characters, like Zeus, end up coming forward, potentially, if he really is gone, or is he hiding out there, if he shows his face again, and how that will influence and mold the situation. And again, a reminder that Zeus is not Bell's biological grandfather. He is his adoptive grandfather. There's no blood relations there. So I want to be very clear there because I've seen a lot of people being like, oh, but Bell, Bell's related to Zeus. No. No. No canon information on that whatsoever. Just a adoptive grandfather. So again, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts about that? Again, keep things civil. I know Darmachi can definitely be a heated topic when it comes to Freya and other characters and gods and goddesses, but I always try to keep things civil, have fun conversations, bring up conversations that make you think a little bit more differently, which is the whole fun and joy about my channel. So again, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.